This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, June the 11th, 2019. It's the feast of St. Barnabas the Apostle. He first appears in Acts 4.36, where he's described as a Jew from Cyprus. In Acts 14, he travels with Paul to a number of destinations before making their way back to Jerusalem for the council around A.D. 50. Tertullian argues that Barnabas was the author of the letter to the Hebrews, and Colossians implies that he was the cousin of St. Mark, the gospel writer. Tradition holds that Barnabas was martyred at Salamis on his homeland of Cyprus around 61 AD. His description in Acts 11.24 sums it up nicely. Quote, Barnabas was a good man and full of the Holy Spirit and faith. It's also Kamehameha Day in the great state of Hawaii. King Kamehameha the Great unified the kingdom of Hawaii, bringing together the separate island kingdoms of Niihau, Kauai, Oahu, Molokai, Laanai, Kohualawi, Maui, and Hawaii, none of which were pronounced the way that I just said them. King Kamehameha was born in the mid-18th century on the big island of Hawaii as the nephew of King Kalani Opu'u. Kamehameha was the right man at the right time. Some Westerners were taking an interest in the island paradise when Simon Metcalf, a British-American trader, made a pig's breakfast of a simple trade deal which then turned into the so-called Oluwalu Massacre. And the other Westerners agreed to train Kamehameha's armies in tactics and gunpowder after that mess. A few more well-timed deaths and storms and a handful of lucky moments combined with some top-notch military thinking and, of course, gunpowder was all that King Kamehameha needed to consolidate the various tribes and kingdoms under his rule. But he wasn't just a conqueror. He was a top-notch king and ruler as well. He established a unified legal system. He taxed his people so that he could establish trade routes with the West and the East. He was a remarkably good king. He died in May of 1819, and per tradition, his body was taken away and hidden. Kamehameha Day was established about 50 years later. I admit to being a sucker for the origin of phrases and idioms, and today in 1920, the U.S. Republican National Convention was going on in Chicago. The top party leadership had gathered at the Blackstone Hotel to come to a consensus on their candidate for the U.S. presidential election. Their choice would be Warren Harding, who would carry the day over Democrat James Cox 404 electoral votes to only 127. But the discussion had all the hallmarks of a backroom deal and an old boys club. A member of the Associated Press who was in and out of the meeting but who couldn't report on anything of substance due to non-disclosure simply wrote about the, quote, smoke-filled room. The phrase has come to be associated with cronyism, power plays, and deception, and the image of wealthy and powerful men smoking cigars and making decisions without any reference at all to the actual will of the people has been a constant accusation against both U.S. political parties for decades, and things don't really seem to be on track to change anytime soon. Still, the phrase itself is so wonderfully evocative and descriptive. The writer who coined the phrase was probably Raymond Clapper, who was a newspaper and radio man who had a reputation for honesty and excellence. Folks interested in these kind of phrases may also look into, quote, invisible primary or, quote, money primary, both of which arose around the same time as smoke-filled room. Finally, and I add this last today because it's less history and more literary pizzazz, today is the traditional day on which the ancient city of Troy was sacked and burned in 1184 B.C. How do we know? Well, we don't. We have some speculation and some math, but we just don't. I include it here because it's the best we have, and it's a day worth commemorating, even if it happened at some point around 3,200 years ago. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.